in terms of uh, just the, the panel we just uh, experienced, uh, legislative overactivity, your opinion basically, the, what this does, the, the main effect that, that we see from legislative activity or overregulation, some may term it, uh, just uh, how you see those effects? Well, what we can clearly infer is that the world economy, that's a fact, is not growing. Actually, the growth ratio is declining. Fact number one. Fact number two, it cannot be attributed to monetary policy because we have, you know, record low interest rates for um, almost, you know, soon a decade. And it's extremely accommodative. Uh, central banks are buying up bonds by, you know, the hundreds of billions or even trillions. <laughs> so by default, if we eliminate all the potential causes, it almost only can be regulation that the world economy is in a very difficult situation. Of course, for Japan, it's a bit uh, separate issue there. It's clearly demographics. Um, Europe will follow about 10 years later in a similar you know, demographic trend. That, that's also a fact. So these two components, by mere you know, uh, definition, it's productivity growth and it is demographic growth, which makes up economic growth. So if we look, for example, the United States still has, you know, positive demographic growth, Europe a little bit, maybe more, we have uh, some immigration now. It actually should be much better than it is. So by default, to try to answer your question, it really comes down to regulation, which is a major stumbling block for business to grow, uh, particularly for small and medium enterprises. As we hear in Canada, they make up 90% and Switzerland about two thirds. For other countries, it's probably somewhere in between. I'm talking of the OECD. And in smaller countries, SMEs are even more of importance and there we think that hundreds of millions of migrant workers, the poorest in our society, they are clearly affected by being unable to do even banking or imagine a, a worker from India earning $200 and he has to pay even more, you know, every dollar counts to remit his, you know, monies back to his family. So the impact and the cost is very, very huge, both in economic as well as in social terms. Uh, and clearly the status quo can't go on for long. Uh, so from your field of expertise, mm -hmm. how do you see a resolution coming about? Yes. Actually, we are used here, we're here in beautiful Monaco, and of course uh, there is Paris. Paris and used to indicate what's going on in the world together with London and uh, today Frankfurt and Berlin. but visiting very often, you know, emerging markets, having worked in China and Indonesia and India, um, very soon, or in some areas already now, they're dictating the terms of what's going on in uh, industry. They do a lot. Uh, let's look at the airline industry, which I think is very interesting from an evolutionary perspective. Uh, process in businesses. It's no longer the regulated, the old OECD countries which dictate the terms. It's the operators which operate from non-regulated, non-union, low or no taxation countries. They dictate the terms. And that will be the future. Uh, emerging markets, because they have scale, they have a lot of consumers, and they have enormous access to cheap labor, which we don't have in Europe or the United States. So they will dictate the terms and it cannot be too far in the distance when they will come and, you know, play their, you know, business, which is legitimate in, in our developed countries. And the ramifications will be huge. Uh, banker salaries will be dramatically lower. Uh, something up to 70% because there will be a uh, migration of the entire industry to low-cost countries mm -hmm. and so regulation will be pretty much uh, bypassed in many sectors. Great, and my, my final question, uh, do organizations like CIFA play a vital role and if so, can, can they help governments and, and these regulatory uh, actors uh, kind of come into this new century and, and come into the new paradigm we seem to now be operating under? Well, I always think such presentations, of course, are uh, great networking. 
but I believe there's a huge multiplica multiplication effect. Each one of us, you know, goes out, is teaching, is communicating, is writing. And I think when we leave, you know, here tomorrow or on Friday, uh, if each one of us tells this to his students, particularly here in the old world in Europe, yes, I'm a proud European, but as I said, you know, uh, the world will be changing dramatically. And I think the best service we can do is the younger people to tell of these, you know, tremendous changes which uh, are coming up on us. First of all, because of the demographics, which are fact, and second is uh, technology is uh, borderless. It will come here and there's not much we can do. And those who are nimble, you know, they will survive and uh, the others won't. It's been in evolution for, you know, since uh, living creatures exist, not just humans. So in summary, I think, yeah, CIFA is uh, very important, but it's only important if we go out and, you know, convey the message and uh, engage with the younger people, of the students, and also, you know, with regulators, because uh, it cannot go on as, you know, it's been in the last 10 years.